Every bit of that playa is full of mercury, arsenic, selenium. It's full of it. The largest impact, of course, will be dust. The cost of not doing anything could be in the tens of billions of dollars. We are screwed because 20 years ago, not enough people were thinking 20 years ahead. Little by little, the Salton Sea is disappearing. California's largest inland body of water used to cover where I'm standing. But right now, it's receded so far behind me that I can barely see it. And disaster looms on the horizon. Toxic dust is getting kicked up, and the communities nearby are suffering from alarming rates of asthma. And kids are some of the most vulnerable. If you let that sea die, we're going to die with it. This is not a joke. This area already looks like Mad Max meets Timothy Leary. Gutted communities, burping mounds of mud, and piles of dead fish along the beaches. But it didn't always look this bad. In 1905 and 1906, the Salton Sea was created by accident when the banks of the Colorado River broke and flooded it. At the time, people thought that the lake was just going to evaporate and disappear. But what ended up happening was that it was fed by water like this that was runoff from farms in the nearby area. Back then, water was so plentiful, it seemed like a good idea to turn a desert into farmland. Today, farmers still flood their fields, and agriculture has grown into a billion-dollar-a-year industry. The water also drew people. It's hard to imagine now, but in the 50s and 60s, the sea drew more people than Yosemite, including Hollywood's glitterati. Now the nearby towns have been whittled down to die-hard locals and the curious. Charter boats for fishing and water skiing, and just hanging out and having fun. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area. My first husband and I were on our honeymoon. There was like seven restaurants and drinking establishments on the, on the beach. It was beautiful. This was a really fun place to be. If I brought my wife on our honeymoon here, she'd divorce me. Yeah, well, it probably. <laughs> it looks a lot well, different now. Right? No, it's extremely different. The good times could only last so long. As Southern California grew, so did demand for water from the Colorado River, which sustains cities throughout the Southwest, as well as farming here in the Imperial Valley. These farms pull more water than anyone else, and the cities wanted a bigger cut. In 2003, San Diego agreed to pay these farmers millions for their water. The deal also required the state to come up with a plan to save the Salton Sea. Problem is, they haven't and in 2017, the tap to the sea will shut off. We don't have the inflows of water that we had before. I think it is a dire moment. With time running out in mid-2015, Governor Jerry Brown appointed this man, Bruce Wilcox, to find a solution California could afford. Everyone wanted the perfect solution to the Salton Sea, and there isn't one. Living close to the Salton Sea, if nothing is done, if no management is, is implemented, is going to be a tough deal and it's gonna get worse as the sea declines. Not to play the blame game, but was the state doing enough before? I don't think anybody was doing enough before, uh, including the state. When the wind blows, it picks up fine dust like this from the top of the exposed playa, and many worry that that's why the rate of asthma here in the area is three times higher than anywhere else in the state. Experts fear that 100 square miles of playa, or dry lake bed, could be exposed within a decade. In 2014, local students headed to the state capitol to urge lawmakers to take action. My little brother has asthma, but the only thing I can do is hope that air quality gets better. If it dries up, it'll be like this toxic wasteland. That's all it'll be. It's life or death. Hospitalization rates are very, very high, actually, compared to the rest of California. And we know there's a connection that when the wind starts blowing or there's dust in the air, that the kids will come in suffering with asthma. The communities around the Salton Sea are primarily Hispanic, working class families largely tied to farming. Kids left and right with asthma. It seems I'm carrying more and more inhalers every year. It's really bad and it seems to have gotten worse. It's like there's less oxygen and like the dust, it'll like clog up my nostrils. I can hardly breathe, it's, it's, it's bad. The particulate matter in the air is going to increase drastically. So that exposed playa also has chemicals like mm -hmm. arsenic, mm -hmm. selenium, lead, mercury. Um, are, are those things that will also potentially have public health impacts? Definitely, because those are things that are linked with uh, neurological problems, with immune suppression problems, with cancers. 
as you can see, there's a string, a row here of just dead fish. Dozens and dozens of fish have ended up here on the shores. It's something you see all along the edges of the Salton Sea. So the Salton Sea is a terminal lake. There's no exit. Water itself evaporates, but water brings with it a lot of salts and other contaminants. So over time, it's become increasingly salty. The rising salinity is killing off the fish, and that starts a dangerous domino effect for over 400 species of migrating birds who would normally stop here. Those birds are going to have to go somewhere else. The challenge, however, is that we've dried up most of the wetlands in the state of California, so there's not too many other places for them to go. Where do you recommend we go? Is there, is there a fairly safe... But how do you save a shrinking sea when there's not enough water to go around? I crossed the border into Mexico with a group of activists who want to bring water back to the Salton Sea by connecting it with the Sea of Cortez. They're looking for possible routes. This is the Laguna Salada. It's a dry lake bed in Mexico, and it's covered in this fine dust. It's what the Salton Sea looked like before 1905, and some activists fear that if the state of California doesn't act fast, then the Salton Sea could look like this again. And so they've proposed a bold plan that would take water from the Sea of Cortez and channel it across this dry lake bed and send it all the way down into the Salton Sea. All right, we make a right instead of a left. <laughs> well, that's as hard as I can cut it. Am I okay? Come this way a little towards me so you don't hit that big one. How, the CDC plan, how long is that going to take to become a reality? If I had everybody say go right now, it'd take five years. And for what cost? Uh, the total costs right now are about 90 billion. 90, 90 billion dollars. Yeah. But the money's there. Where's the money? I can't tell you that, but I can tell you the money's there. <laughs> I have lots of lenders. I have lots of people that are willing to participate. Dutch are willing to participate and finance all the greenhouses and agriculture. So the Dutch. In Costa Rica, if there's people there willing to finance all the solar. This is hard to believe. But when, when you hear yourself explain and when describe this project, does it I'm, sound realistic to you? Yeah, it does. But then I'm looking at it from a different side of the window. I can't help but think this is what it must have felt like to settle the West, to look out at a desert and see so much potential. It was an era when no infrastructure project was too big or unreasonable. It was a time for romantics, for dreaming big. But today, things are much more complicated. The reality is that the future of the Salton Sea will probably be decided here, somewhere much less romantic. State Assemblyman John Benoit has proposed a very different looking plan that seems perfectly tailored for budget-wary politicians in Sacramento. We've got a consensus building around a plan that basically creates a small body of water down here, runs water along the edge. The plan promises to address some of the most pressing problems. It would create habitat for wildlife and bring tourist dollars back to the region. Benoit also says it will keep down the dust problem is, no one's sure exactly how that will work. So you're confident that with this SWIFT plan, that's not going to be an issue? Well, let me say that when we have the full build out, we will have a, a very comprehensive plan. We're and, behind. and just to be clear, your, your district is up here, right? Yeah. And the wind blows that way? Predominantly, okay. yeah. Also unknown is when any of this will get approved, funded, and ultimately finished. So I'm your, optimistic that maybe 2020, maybe 2019. Uh, maybe 2025. I, there's a lot of questions out there. Benoit's plan has political momentum, but with all these questions, it doesn't feel like a real solution for the unfolding disaster in the Imperial Valley. We've already seen a migration from the Salton Sea, Bombay Beach, Desert Shores. They used to be just lively places. When the water goes, the migration will begin. But that's not always an option. Plenty of people here tell me they can't afford to move or they don't want to leave their homes. Four years into California's historic drought, communities all over the state are desperate for water. And what's happening here around the Salton Sea could be an alarming premonition of what's to come.